Hi guys, I'm Putsi and welcome back to my channel and this video as you can see from the title is going to be my August and September reading wrap up. Before we continue on with the video, I'm just going to mention this at first, full disclosure. My hair is looking very different from my last video and also few next future video because I've been filming a lot these past few weeks but I haven't been able to edit any of them because I've been feeling just not very well both physically and mentally so I've been taking kind of a break from editing and posting on YouTube and this hairstyle I just cut them a few days ago so in my next few vlogs my hair will look just completely different but no matter i just really need to film this because i wasn't able to film one for my august wrap up like i said i haven't been feeling very well by the time i felt way better it was already halfway through september i don't know if it will make sense to post the august wrap up video like towards the end of September. Besides, in September, I wasn't having a very good month in terms of reading. I only read like three or four books. Wait, only three books in September? I figured why not just combine all of them, compile them into one video. So August was one of the best months for me in terms of reading towards the whole entire 2021, maybe even my whole entire life. I somehow managed to finish nine books which was just kind of like i still can't believe how i managed to do that but i did and all the books that i've read was quite incredible so yeah i'm just going to go through all of the books that i've read chronologically based on the time i finished them let's just get on to the first book which was amari and the night brothers one of my prettiest incredible book cover i own it has a silvery glittery sprayed edges it has this holographic title and the inside of it is also amazing which like and as you can see based on the title and the cover it is a middle grade fantasy books i think this could be my first middle grade book that i've read besides harry potter but i made kind of a promise to myself this year i will try to expand my palettes on reading and try to read a bunch of different genres and see what i like and as it turns out i do love middle grade not just harry potter because this book i I truly enjoy. I had a great time reading this. I read this in such a perfect time. I was kind of edging towards a reading slump, but then this book kind of saved me. It's a light-hearted, fun, warm, cozy kind of read, just like what I expected to get from a middle grade books. I mainly got it because of the cover. I haven't heard a lot of these books from a lot of people. I don't know why. It's just not as famous as uh, said Harry Potter, Nevermore. This was hardly talked about, but why because this book is also incredible it has a similar vibe to harry potter because the main character is kind of an outsider who are kind of pushed into this world not knowing anything and they have to learn everything found new friends found new family in harry potter it's more like magical world in this one it's more supernatural world and magicians in this world kind of treat it as like this, the villain, it's illegal and Amari kind of jumped into this world not knowing anything but she was determined to get into this supernatural, more like summer camp kind of because she was trying to find out what happened to her brother, her brother went missing, nobody can find out what happened he had a mysterious job no one knows what kind of job it is and everyone just set on the idea that her brother was just maybe he was lying he didn't have a job especially mixed in with all the prejudice prejudices that amari and her brother faced because they're black which is not cool to think that oh there's no way that they have a good job but amari truly believed that her brother have an incredible job her brother kind of sent a message to get amari into this summer camp in a supernatural world and she found out that her brother was kind of a big deal in this world he was like a secret agent for the supernatural world which is super cool so we spent the whole entire book trying to find out where her brother is what happened and also discovering her place in the supernatural world trying to excel in the summer camp and try to prove everyone wrong because just because she is black just because she is an outsider doesn't mean that she won't be good at 
this world even though all the other kids were kind of born into it i love amari as a character she was such a strong female lead character the world itself is quite vivid but one thing that i don't like about this book is i think they have a bad editing process i don't know if it was intentional or not there are a lot of sentences in it that kind of missing <laughs> a few words felt disconnected and just weird and i don't know if that's intentional if that's the language that they were using in that world or if it's just a mistake in the editing process if you know anything about that please let me know but i don't it doesn't feel like it's intentional but besides that the rest of the book is pretty incredible i love it and i would highly recommend if you are trying to find a good fantastical middle grade books and i feel like this will also be a good book to read during this month because it has that kind of you know supernatural which it kind of feels i give this book around 4.8 stars maybe so the second book I finished in August is actually an audiobook and it was Radio Silence by Alice Osman. Alice Osman is kind of popular. They wrote the Heartstopper series which I haven't read but I really want to maybe in 2022. It has something to do with the podcast. The previous book that I've listened to in audiobook was also kind of have a podcast format in it which kind of drew me into this book in the first place and I thought it was quite a solid coming of age kind of story not really my age <laughs> I love the platonic relationship between the two main characters because you can feel the love that they have for each other but it's quite clear that it's just purely friendship and we don't get a lot of that in coming of age kind of story at least i haven't read a lot of those this book touched on so many important topics especially for teenagers for someone who are trying to find their place in the world trying to get into college you don't have to follow the society's rule to live a fulfilling life there's no set course that you have to take just because everyone go to college doesn't mean that's the only way the only path to success just because your parents want you to do something doesn't mean that that's the the only way to live you can always make your own rule make your own life do the things you love it's about standing up for yourself it teaches us about love and how powerful friendship can be it also has some lgbtq romance in it it's also touched on some heavier topics such as mental health issues and abusive parents make sure to check out the trigger warning I don't really like the voice for alid i don't know it just sounds a little bit annoying to me at times but it also kind of fit the description of him so i don't know i don't know if i like the voice or not but overall i truly enjoy this book i give this a solid four stars so the next book that i've read is one last stop by cassie mcquiston it's a sapphic romance with a little bit of kind of sci-fi theme which is just a very weird combination but it was the one that intrigued me the most cassie mcquiston is also the writer of red royal no red white and royal blue i think that's what it's called but i haven't read that book but i really really want to especially after i read this one because i freaking love this i love the writing style i love the pacing i love the story itself the romance built quite nicely this was set up in new york city and i love everything that has anything with new york like i just love when movies and books are set up in new york city and this book is about the main character who funnily enough called august and i read this book in august so the main character august moving to new york city she's very cynical and she's suppose her moving to new york city will prove all of her cynicism right which is that things like magic and cinematic love stories don't exist only to be proven kind of wrong <laughs> because one day she met with this girl called jane on a train it was a little bit like love at first sight they can immediately felt there's connection there and call it fate because after that first moment she kept bumping into jane on the train jane was always there little did she know jane was actually out of place and out of time she wasn't supposed to be in this present time she was actually from back in the 70s or 60s or something i forgot august find out about that so she decided she will help jane figure out what happened trying to help jane get back into her life get back into her time they will get closer romance and connection will blooms not quite slow burn but just the pacing of the relationship is 
done right in my opinion i also love the relationship august have with her friend she finds her friends her group her family in the city their relationship is so wholesome and all of her friends have very unique characters i love each and every single one of them their friend group is incredible i wish i have that kind of friend group love the writing love the ending love all the characters but also the other characters relationships it's also quite funny and charming i don't know how to describe this book other than it's just perfection in my opinion i had such a great time reading this and i give this book five stars next is another romance book but it's very different from the last one but still with a little bit of not sci-fi but more supernatural there's some psychic ability involved it's not just a lovey-dovey sweet kind of love story it's very much a tragic love story which i do really like kind of like romeo and juliet the journey is very romantic and sweet but it has a lot of tragedy involved and I also think this is probably my favorite book from Nicola Yoon granted I only read like two books from her but I think this is much much better than The Sun is Also a Star I know it's probably a very controversial statement because a lot of people love that book but I didn't connect to that book as much and I even thought Frankly in Love by David Yoon which is Nicola Yoon's husband is also much better I don't know what it is about that book that I just didn't like I like the writing, I like the fact that that book has a lot of important topics involved about racism, about family dynamic, about being an immigrant also touch on identities but the love story itself feels a little bit too much coincidences involved and that I guess that just wasn't really my thing it felt way too unrealistic just my opinion which makes this book even better because all the things that i love in that book also kind of present in this one nicole yoon's writing is just impeccable in my opinion if you love taylor swift and admire her songwriting they kind of have a similar writing style in which they can paint a very vivid perfect picture and you can imagine it perfectly in your head with just a few deliberate words that also felt natural and organic i don't know if that makes any sense which is why i think her books is on the shorter side but still feel like a complete long journey it feels long but in a very good way the pacing is perfect the chapters is quite short which i love and she also still tackle a lot of heavier and important topics in this book as well which is just what i love from the sun is also a star but multiplies better because of the love story is in my opinion better at least it's much more for me i think i haven't even mentioned what the book is about <laughs> god I'm a mess but this book is about Evie Thomas who doesn't believe in love anymore because of what just happened to her within her family her father cheated on her mother so she doesn't believe in love anymore and then one day she had a very weird spooky encounter with someone who end up giving her this book called instructions for dancing and inside that book has an address of a dance school but what weird was after that encounter, she all of a sudden have this psychic ability to see someone's relationship from the beginning, how they met, to the present moment, and then to the future or the end of the relationship. It's creepy, it's weird, it can be entertaining, but at the same time, it can also be very scary and very discouraging to see a lot of relationship fail because not every relationship lasts and that just makes her not believe in love even further <laughs> she decided to do something about it and try to get rid of it or just find out what was wrong what happened why all of a sudden she can get this ability so she decided to go to the dance school that was written inside the book and then she decided to get into that school she will participate in an amateur ballroom dance competition she met with this guy who are going to be her partner in this competition and this guy could not be more different than her because he's all about saying yes to everything and she is obviously is not that kind of person anymore ballroom dancing is about trust so they decided to get to know each other so they can build their trust be better at their dancing and one thing led to another you guessed it they will fall in love it's not as lovey-dovey as you can think because like i said it's a very much kind of a tragic love story i don't want to give away what the ending 
but it's sad it's tragic but it's also very lovely because at the end of the day she end up having a very great lessons not just about romance but about life in general and one of my favorite quote from this book is the problem with broken hearts isn't that they kill you it's that they don't which is so true i love this book if you're not a fan of romance books that are very lovey dovey maybe you will like this it's sad it's emotional it's it makes me smile such a roller coaster of emotion and i love that for it i feel like this deserves five stars as well next is another audiobook and it was the unraveling of cassidy holmes i mainly get into this book because a lot of people said it's it has a similar vibe to daisy jones and the sick haven't read that one bought it from book depository but it's been months and it hasn't arrived yet i'm still waiting for it i know the audiobook for daisy jones is like incredible but i really want to read the book first before i listen to the audiobook so i decided to listen to the unraveling of cassidy holmes first because it has a similar kind of story it's about someone famous in hollywood a singer in a band and how hard and crazy their life is as a Hollywood star. We get to see the relationship between the singer and the other band members, all the behind the scenes of their career and everything. But trigger warning, it has a very dark storyline because I don't know if it's a spoiler but it was mentioned from the very first chapter, first few chapters so I know it won't be as big of a shock but spoiler alert, Cassidy Holmes was found dead a couple years after her stepping out from the spotlight will go back and forth between different timelines will follow along her journey with the group how she got into the group through Cassidy's perspective while also back and forth between the current timeline but through the other members perspective which I really like we get to see the whole unraveling of Cassidy Holmes from a lot of different angles there are something in it that I don't quite enjoy I cannot really pinpoint what it is but there's just something missing that I, I don't know maybe they can build the story and the complexity of this Hollywood thing even further and I don't really like the last few chapters of the book I thought it was a little bit rushed in at some point I don't know if I will like this book as much as I do if I read the book in a book format but I really like the audiobook the voices and everything I thought it was done really really well if you're looking for a good audiobook I highly recommend this one and I give this book a solid 4.5 stars it was quite an entertaining but also a little bit heavy so beware of that so the next two book that I've read in August is part of a series the first book which is one of us is lying and the second one one of us is neck I think this is supposed to be a trilogy the third one hasn't come out yet I don't know when but I think it's either next year or 2023 I don't know why it took so long, cannot wait, but I freaking love these two books. It has a very similar vibe to Pretty Little Liars, which is one of my absolute favorite series because it was just fun and mysterious at the same time. It has friendship and love story in it. So these two books tackle two completely different stories. They were set one year apart. They're from the same grade and once they graduated, this thing happened. This first book is between five students walk into detention only to live with four of them alive and one of them is dead and all four of them are becoming the main suspect of this said to be murdered it's about Bronwyn who has never publicly broken a rule there's also Cooper who only knows what he's doing in the baseball diamond then there's a bad boy called Nate who is one misstep away from a life of crime and then there's also brown queen Eddie who is holding together the cracks in her perfect life and then the one who died, Simon, who are an outsider and creator of the notorious gossip app at Bayview High. And the main reason why they are the main suspect is not only that they walk into detention together, it all happened when they were all there only five of them. Turns out the four of them are going to be the main topic for the gossips, the news that Simon will put out in the next day. Maybe one of them want to kill Simon to kill off the story and we'll see all four of them trying to survive all of the fallout, them being suspected while also trying to figure out what actually happened and who is the real murderer. 
because like the title said one of them is like i don't know if it's got a spoiler but spoiler alert i love the relationship of bronwyn and nate i ship them so hard and i'm glad that they kind of present again in this book because the main character in this one is Bronwyn's sister who also present in this one but now we get to see her being the main target of the next generation crime drama mystery thing because after what happened in the first book someone trying to copy Simon's blog but take it a step further in a more dangerous way now this person make a throat and dare game but this game is quite lethal choosing the throat may reveal your darkest secrets accepting the dare however very dangerous even fatal and the teenagers of Bayview must work together once again to find the culprit before it's too late. Even though the characters in this book are not the main character in the next one, we also still get a glimpse of what happened. They are being the side character in this one which I really love. I love the continuation. To be quite honest, I kind of like this book a little, a tiny bit more. But I still enjoy the second one. But the ending of this is crazy. Ends in a cliffhanger. I don't like that because the other book is still far away but I just don't like the direction that they take at the end there all the twists and turns before that I totally enjoy and totally okay with it's a very fun mysterious thriller quite easy to follow I like all the twists and turns it is full of them there's always something going on that makes me believe something will happen only to find out that's not the case at all especially this one in my opinion every Every single character is quite unique and different, love the romance, also love the friendships aspect of these two books. I give this book 5 stars, I give this one 4.75 stars. Also this UK paperback edition is really fun and cool, I love this cover, love the spread edges and overall very enjoyable. Next book I finished is another audiobook which is The Soulmate Equation, Equation? <laughs> by Christina Lauren. I think they are two people writing together, right? If I'm not mistaken, it's not one person. I actually went into this book kind of blindly, not knowing what it is about, but I was interested with the cover because it has a DNA thing. Then I read what it is about, saw the reviews, and decided to get into it because it sounds promising and interesting it's about a dating app based on someone's dna so you get matched not by swapping right and left not just based on someone's picture and description you put in your dna sample and then this app will try to match you with someone compatible and one day this main character a single mother and she just wasn't really into the, the whole dating thing she finds out that she has a 98 percent match which is very very rare with this guy who turns out to be the owner of the app it's not really a fake dating but i think you can kind of call it that because both wasn't really interested but they was kind of intrigued because even 80 percent is kind of rare 98 percent like you're bound to be soulmate and the app will launch in a couple of months so they decided please do this just get to know each other just pretend to be in a relationship for publicity sake it's good for the app they find out that they have a lot of things in common but is it really because they have a lot in common or is it because they believe they have a lot in common so everything feels easy it has a little bit of smart a little bit steamy the main character is a bit too perfect for me like the guy the progression in the relationship i think is a little bit too fast i prefer more slow burn for this kind of fake dating trope maybe because they just believe that this thing supposed to happen because of the 98 percent match their relationship at the beginning felt too almost too easy but it still has a lot of troubles towards the end there also a little bit too predictable like it's not my favorite romance but i enjoyed my time listening to it quite a lot just a very interesting take on romance so yeah i gave this book a 4.25 4 4.25 stars i know by the way my scoring system with books is 
quite easy it's not hard for me to give a book 4 or 4.5 stars i gave a lot of book 5 stars as well so i am quite easy to please and this next book is another five star read one of my first like full-on sci-fi books that i've read i'm so glad that i decided to pick this one up mainly because of the cover whenever i saw someone holding this trilogy saw the cover always intrigued me i thought the cover is very very cool a bit retro it's just the illustration was perfection in my opinion for a book cover but also the premise of the story is very interesting it's set up in a future world where human beings already find a way to become immortal human don't have to struggle with death or even sickness anymore life has become so much easier human are ruled not by governments and stuff but ruled by the tunnel head which is kind of like an ai whenever things are broken it will immediately fix the problem which can make life a little bit boring what sort of gain you wish to achieve in life when everything is easy scythe is the people or group of people whose the main job is to kill people <laughs> human is immortal now but of course the world has only this limited space which is why Scythe is required to make sure that Earth won't reach its limit capacity and in the first book we get to follow our two main characters who are chosen to be the next Scythe so they will have to learn how to fight, how to clean for a year and then at the end of the year the Scythe them will choose if you are capable of being a Scythe or not and we follow along the rival and the friendship between these two main characters who are fighting with one another to become a scythe it's very very interesting there's a lot of interesting things about life and humanity in this world it makes you think the writing is quite advanced compared to some other this book for example like you need a little bit more thinking which i think is one of the charm of this book what makes me like this book the pacing is quite slow but i thought it was very fitting for this book and i just love the whole thing i enjoyed the whole experience like i said i gave this book five stars and now we get into the books i've read in september and the first one is the next book in the scythe trilogy which is called the arc of scythe i think and the second book is called thunderhead like i mentioned before thunderhead is the one that ruled human thunderhead has no bias treats everyone equally but they are able to think they're honest they can see everything everywhere at any time all at once just a very powerful one entity who can see and control everything the only thing that they cannot touch is the scythe and its scythe them so the scythe cannot touch the thunderhead thunderhead cannot touch the scythe they just cannot interfere in the affairs of the scythe them all it can do is observe and it does not like what it sees because in this book we'll get to see scythe kind of crumbling down side whose jobs to clean people be very fair not act on based on bias and do it because it's their job not not because they enjoy killing but there are more and more people or side who treat their job as a side as a fun job and it's much more about killing than gleaning and that's not the right direction moving forward thunderhead just does not like that but cannot do anything about it because because they cannot interfere there's also another mysterious side all they like to do is killing all these bad side who enjoys killing rather than treating it as cleaning so the second book is mainly about that about the good side versus the bad sides but what interesting about this one compared to the previous one i forgot to mention that at the end of the chapter inside we get to see the journal entry of the sites because it's it's like required for every single site to have a journal and submit them to the site them and it's available to see for everyone but in this book we don't really get the journal entry from the site but we get to see get into this the head of the thunderhead we get to read its conscious thinking and it's very very interesting and fascinating to read that's actually one of my favorite part of this book there's a lot of interesting quotable things i've read there and these two book is also like the first book that i tapped and highlighted and now i cannot stop i actually love tabbing and highlighting quotes from my books now it's and it's because of this 
two books. In terms of pacing, it feels a little bit slower. I can understand why some people can call this book boring compared to the first one. In this one, there's a lot of question mark. I don't really know which direction the story will go in. I give this book a 4.2 stars. And I'm planning on reading the next one maybe this month in October or maybe even next month because I have a lot of thrillery books, more Halloween-y fantasy books that I want to read. So I don't know if I will be able to finish this soon, but I cannot wait to read the last book, which is The Tall. And hopefully it will be better and more exciting than the second book, but I still really enjoy the second one. I truly end September in a high note. Even though I only read three books, I freaking enjoy all these three books, especially this last two, which is written by Emily Henry. I did an Emily Henry readathon, kind of. Maybe will out in a couple of weeks because I haven't able to edit them. I read Beach Read and People We Meet on Vacation. I gave these two books both five stars. It was honestly one of the best romance books I've ever read. Emily Henry quickly becoming one of my favorite romance author. These two romance books has a lot going for it, has a lot of depth in it. It tackles topics such as trauma, someone's past, and also deal with a lot of healing within oneself. These two books is quite different from one another. This one is about two people who thinks that they hate each other. Two authors who are written a very different kind of book. August Everett is an acclaimed author of literary, fi literary fiction and then there's January Andrews writes best-selling romance. They went into the same university or college and then one summer fate kind of brought them together again because they end up living in neighboring beach house while also in the middle of a writer's block. And then one day they decided to challenge one another. What if they write in each other's genre. They could not be more polar opposites from one another. August will have to write romance novels because he doesn't really believe in love and he kind of hates happy endings. He writes a lot of tragedy while January is all about happy endings. She believes in love, she believes in happy endings like I said. But this past year has also been very rough for January which is kind of what made her have a very different view on life. Also leads to her having a writer's block. They think maybe this will kind of push themselves out of their writer's block but also one another can see that writing in this different genre is not as easy as it seems. They also get to see each other's workflow, how they work, how they write, how they do their research research before they write so they get to spend a lot of time with one another and everyone will finish a book and no one will fall in love really or is it really those they weren't really hate one another but it's just a lot their relationship was always been filled with a lot of miscommunication not talking to one another and then one day they will try to be honest with one another they will also have to face their fear and also face their own past to be able to move past this moving forward in this relationship like i said what i love about these two books a lot of healing facing our own traumas process them understand it and understand your feelings and then this book while also deal with a lot of that it's set up quite differently and i think more interestingly than beach read these two books have one perspective from the our main female character but this has one singular timeline while this one moved back and forth between the current summer and all the previous summer leading up to the current one. I don't know if that makes any sense. I feel like that's confusing. But this is about two best friends, Poppy and Alex. And for the past decade, they've been spending their summer together. They have this ritual, their own summer trip. Every single summer, just the two of them traveling and have a lot of fun together. But at the present time, they actually haven't been talking to one another for the past two years. They were in a rocky situation in their friendship. This summer is actually the last chance for them to make it right, to do something about it. So Poppy decided to invite Alex one last time in this summer trip and try to salvage their relationship. We don't really know the fight or what happened yet. So we also have a little bit of mystery kind of guessing what happened, what made them have this huge disagreement. It's just so lovely to see the progression of their friendship all these years. The slow burn in it is crazy because there's always been something. As much as you want them to be in a romantic relationship, you cannot help but love their friendship because they're just they've been such 
great friends for one another but I also ship them as a couple. I love every single characters. I feel like all four of them felt very unique and different from one another. I also love the way Emily Henry writes her characters. It's very multi-dimensional. We get to see them not just who they are now. We get to see all of their past and what makes them who they are now. All of the tragedies that happened to them. All of the things that kind of traumatized them. Not really a tragic story but it also has a lot of ups and downs. Like I said, dealing with trauma, your own healing so that you can move on and have a very solid relationship with your significant others. By the end of the book, I just ship these two relationships so much. I don't want it to end but at the same time, their relationship just felt so secure. Even if something might happen to them in the future, you just feel you're not worried that anything truly bad will happen to them. Whatever happens next, they will be able to face it, find solutions for it. These two books just left with such a satisfaction note in my opinion. I feel like I get a very great conclusion. I know it's fiction but it feels as real as it can be. I feel so close to the characters and it feels like I witnessed these two relationships with my own eyes. It happens to one of my closest friends and like I said I give these two books five stars and I know Emily Henry will come out with another romance book sometimes in the near future in early 2022. I think the next one is going to be a spring release. These two books have been summer reads and I cannot wait to read what that book is going to be about because I just know whatever it is Emily Henry will be able to deliver. She will take you in a roller coaster of emotion and as you can see, I tapped a lot of them. Like there's just a lot of things, especially in Beach Read, not as much in people we meet on vacation. In Beach Read, a lot of quotable sentences just about life and trauma, relationship. And also don't forget to read this behind the book part because they have this and I personally think this part is also amazing. Emily Henry tells you the idea behind the book and everything and there's also some amazing quotes in it. I'm not going to read the quotes that I typed in here because there's a lot of them but I'm just going to read one from each book from the behind the book part. So in Beach Read, sometimes we lose the ability to create simply because we are tired. We need to rest and recover. But other times, we can't move forward because there are hard questions we have to ask first. Hurdles in our path, we first have to jump or walls that need breaking down. Interrogations demanding to be made. And when we are brave enough to do so, we can make something beautiful. Something we didn't know we were capable of before we began. How amazing is that? <laughs> and from people we meet on vacation, I hope this book carries you somewhere magical. I hope it lets you feel ocean breezes in your hair and smell spilled beer on a karaoke bar's floor. And then I hope it brings you back, that it brings you home and fills you with ferocious gratitude for the people you love. Because really, it's less about the places we go than the people we meet along the way. But most of all, it's about the ones who stay who become home. I don't know what else I can say about these two books. You should read these two books even if you don't like romance. It's like absolutely must read for me. One of the highlights of 2021 for sure. And I cannot wait to reread these books in the future. I kind of want to reread them now but I will stop myself and read another books. But yeah, that concludes the whole entire wrap up. Based on the books I've mentioned in this video, if you've read any of them, please let me know which one is your favorite. Give me some recommendations of book for me to check out next. I will love to read that and maybe considering subscribing to my channel if you want to see more future book content and a lot of vlogs. And lastly, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I hope I can see you in my next video. Bye guys!